did CAM protocol start? And what was the necessity or need for CAM protocol? Let's try to figure out answers to these questions in our today's video. Hello everyone, welcome to Link Frequency and I'm Aishwarya Patta. This video is part of our course that is Introduction to AutoSAP. So without any further delay, let's get started. CAN stands for Controller Area Network Protocol. The CAN bus is a vehicle bus designed to allow the microcontrollers and devices to communicate with each other's application without a host computer. The development of CAN bus started in 1983 by Robert Bosch. It was officially released by Robert Bosch in 1986 at Society of Automotive Engineers Conference. Intel and Philips produced the first CAN bus controller chip in 1987, namely with Intel 82526 and Philips 82C200. Bosch published several versions of CAN specification. The latest one was CAN 2.0 that was published in the year 1991. This specification has two parts. The part A is for normal standard format with 11-bit identifier and part B is for extended format with 29-bit identifier. The Bosch CAN specification became an ISO standard in 1993 for CAN 2.0a and extended in 1995 to permit longer device identifiers for CAN 2.0b. Later, in 2012, Bosch released CAN FD with a version of 1.0. So this was a short background related to how CAN started. CAN is one of the widely used communication protocols in the automotive industry, which is specially designed for real-time application. It is a message-based protocol, which means that messages carry a message identifier. Based on this identifier, the priority is decided. CAN is one of the protocol that is supported by AutoSAR along with other protocols like LIN, FlexRay and Ethernet. CAN is used in automotive industry to replace the complex wiring harness with two wired bus. The wires are twisted pairs having 120 ohm impedance connected at each end. Now let's move on to our next question that is why there was need or necessity for CAN protocol. In the early 1980s, the automotive industry saw a significant increase in the use of electronic control units that is ECUs for various functions in the vehicles. All electronic devices was connected to each other via wires. It worked totally fine when the requirement and the function were very basic. However, the existing communication methods such as point-to-point -point wiring and analog signaling were not suitable for handling the growing complexity and the reliability requirements of automotive systems. Hence, Robert Bosch recognized the need for a standardized communication protocol and came up with a new communication protocol known as CAN. Let's clearly understand it with few points. The first point is increasing electronic components. As vehicles became more advanced and computerized, the number of electronic components and systems within the vehicles increased significantly. These components such as engine control units, transmission control units, ABS systems, airbags and others needed a reliable means of communication to exchange information and coordinate their actions. Moving on, our second point is wiring complexity reduction. Traditional point-to-point -point wiring systems used in vehicles for communication were becoming increasingly complex and heavy, especially as the number of electronic components grew. The wiring harness were difficult to manage, it added weight to the vehicle and were prone to errors during installation and maintenance. The CAN protocol provided a solution by allowing multiple ACUs to communicate over a shared bus thus reducing the amount of wiring required and simplifying the overall system's architecture. Moving on to our next point that is reliability in harsh environments. Automotive environments can be challenging with factors such as electrical noise, vibrations, temperature variations and electromagnetic interference. The CAN protocol was designed to provide reliable communication in these harsh conditions by using differential signaling which minimizes the impact of noise and interference. Last but not the least, the last point is standardization. Prior to introduction of CAN, different vehicle manufacturers used their own communication protocol, thus making it challenging to integrate components from different suppliers. CAN's development as an open standard promoted and enabled the automotive industry to adapt a unified communication protocol, facilitating the integration of components and collaboration among manufacturers and suppliers. 
So overall, we can say that the CAN protocol was necessary to address the increasing complexity of vehicle systems. It was also necessary to reduce the wiring complexity and also provide communication in harsh environment. Thank you so much for watching our video content. If there are any queries related to the video, you can surely comment down in the comment section. Until we meet on our next video, happy learning. Tune yourself to make a difference.